here with Steve Adebate from Lockheed Martin. And Steve, you spoke yesterday um, about some kind of the cyber kill chain that Lockheed has put together that relies not just on, you know, keeping the intruders out, but sort of finding them once they're in and then trying to shut down what they want to do while they're on their network. How did that whole concept come about? So interesting enough, that concept came about off of like trial and error. Being a defense contractor, we usually have some highly sophisticated attackers you know, coming to us. And when we started doing our security intelligence center back in 2003, we noticed that we needed a methodology because just as you said, you can't stop everybody all at once at the door. Right. We wanted to find ways that we could sit up there, stop them multiple times later on, and then sit up there and learn and enhance all the way straight through. So we started developing methodologies for each phase that we thought an attacker had to go through. And that's how we came up with the cyber kill chain. So it was sort of, it was based on the, the attacks that you were seeing on your network and sort of learning from what the attackers were doing, thinking it, it, almost an offensive mindset rather than the defensive mindset. Yeah, funny enough, it was offensive mindset. We, we basically took something that was bad and turned it good. We set up there and looked and go, okay, what do these guys want to do and get on our network? And then we started backtracking and figuring out where can we stop them all in those steps. So basically, our job became better because as a defender, if you had to worry about anybody getting your network and you only had one chance to stop them, it's not a real fun job. But now when we expanded seven steps, it, we started enhancing, we started learning more, and we started to realize that that was the proper way to wind up thinking about it. And so one of the pieces of that strategy is kind of a monitoring phase. So if there are if they're attackers on your network, you guys discover them, you sort of push them off into an area where you can begin to monitor them, and that must bring about some of the sort of most fascinating intelligence that you guys get from this. Oh, it's absolutely, you hit it. Fascinating intelligence even isn't the word for it. You know, we could look at the example of the New York Times. They actually did somewhat of the methodology, uh, not knowing the cyber kill chain, and they learned more and more techniques that they put back into their defenses. So now that people later on can't wind up getting in there, and the vendors who supply them those defenses can now enhance their, pro their products so that you can get the two best of both worlds. I can sit up there, stop the attacker, and now I get a new product that understands those techniques so I don't have to worry about them later. So are these techniques that the average enterprise can use? I mean, you guys are kind of at the top of the top of the pile there in terms of sophistication, resources, that kind of thing. And also, you see the the best of the best kind of attackers. But you know, for a smaller, medium enterprise, is, is there pieces that, that, of this that they can use as well? No, there's definitely pieces that you can wind up using. And understand that the cyber kill chain is something that's extensive because you're always doing a constant monitoring mode, but you can tailor it down to where you're only doing a minimum amount of effort for the attackers that you feel that you have to defend against. And that's why it makes it a flexible methodology. It doesn't matter where you sit in the food chain. You could be an agriculture um, company that sits up there and employs the networks. Right. You just have to look at your threats and see which, which pieces make sense. Okay. All right, Steve, thanks very much. No, no, thank you.